like a behind the scenes look at your favorite film, Ghost's Log Helper lets you see the data behind your theme, empowering you to debug your theme like a pro. Using real world examples will show you everything you need to know about using the Log Helper, from getting started to advanced operations. Let's get into it. The Log Helper is unique in that it requires Ghost to be running in development mode. So I'm going to show you how to start Ghost in development mode. On the left, I have a terminal and I'm in the directory where I installed Ghost. And on the right, I have a, um, I have a browser open to my cats and art Ghost site. So on the left here in the terminal, I'm going to use the command ghost run D. And this runs or starts ghost in development mode. That D flag stands for development. So as soon as you run that, you see a lot more information being output to the terminal. And this is just giving you information about ghost. And for every page that you go to on your ghost site, you're going to see information about the requests and whether they were successful or not. We're now running in development mode and ready to start using the log helper. But one important thing you should know is that if you want to stop development mode, press control C and that will exit it. Another important process of theme development is making sure that you can see the changes you make to your theme in real time. A key part of that is to make sure that you open the theme from the ghost installation directory uh, in, your theme, in your code editor. Go into the Casper directory, and because I have VS Code installed, I can use this shortcut. I can do code period, which will open VS Code in this directory, in the Casper theme. All right, so I did that, and you see that I opened VS Code here. It opened to the author file, which is the file we're gonna work on, but I'll show you an example of how you can see real-time changes. All right, so let's see here, um, do something easy. So at the very top of this file, let's just put in an H1 tag and say, hi everyone. So if I save that and now refresh this, boom, there it is, a real time change that you can see without having to re-upload your theme or anything like that. And this will make the process of debugging much easier. Let's just see the log helper in action to get a sense of how it works. All right, I'm here in Casper in the theme and I am on the author page. And within the author context, which means here after this opening of the author um, tag, I'm going to put in a log helper. So this syntax is two curly brackets followed by log and then the name of the property that you want to log. In this case, let's just log the author's name. So I'm gonna put name, save the file. And now I will switch over to the terminal and then reload the page on my ghost site. And you'll see there is a lot of different um, output here, but you can look for the output within there named Jamie Larson, and I'll show you in a minute a way to make that even clearer. But here is the name of the author here, Jamie Larson, log to the console. So that's the basic um, usage of the log helper. Now let's look at a specific problem that we can solve with it. The first use of the log helper we're going to take a look at is how to log specific data. Back on our Cats and Art site, we're still on Jamie Larson's homepage. And if we refresh, we can see that the background image for Jamie's profile isn't working. Now, when we look in the log, we can already see, so if I just refresh to pull this through again, that there is this 404 error going on. And that means, of course, that something isn't found. And it looks like it's gonna be that background image. So this is a way that the log helper already tells you that there's something amiss. But if we come back to our theme, we can look and see that there is an image helper being used here. And this is in fact the, um, 
background image that we're trying to figure out why it isn't working. So let's try the log helper here. So again, we do the curly braces, log, and then what we're looking for is the feature image that doesn't seem to be loading. So we save that, we open up our log again, we refresh the page, and in this output we see up here undefined. And that this is probably our image that we're looking for, that some reason it's coming through undefined, but we can make it even more explicit by coming back to our template and annotating this log helper. So for instance, we can put in here feature image, some static text, and what that does then is we come back to our terminal, we refresh, is this allows us to put in some annotation, to put in some extra text to know exactly what property we're getting. And so yes, in fact, the feature image is undefined. That's why it's not working here. Well, then what can we do? What can we do to try to find out what is the right property to put? We'll look at that in the next section. In the previous section, we determined that the property for the background image isn't right, and that that's why Jamie's missing their beautiful gradient background image that they had set. And so now we're gonna look at a way to find out, well, which data is actually available here. So in the template, we can use the log helper to put uh, to output this. And what does this mean? This means all the available data in the present context. So we're in the author context, because up here we open up the author context. And then this again will mean, tell me all the data that's available for the author. So let's see what it looks like. So I'll save this. I will open up my terminal. And then I will refresh the page. And then you can see, come down, that we have the author context here. And you'll see some properties that you recognize, like name and location. And what that means is these are properties that you can use in your template to output dynamic data. And the one that we're looking for is this one, cover image. Well, we know because it has image in the property name and it's also a PNG file. So if we come back to our template, we can see that we are using feature image, which is the major, the main image in a post. But for an author, we want to change this to cover image. So we update that property and now we refresh and the background image displays as expected, and Jamie's super happy to have their background image showing correctly. So far, we've looked at the two major ways to use the log helper, to log individual or specific data, as well as to log all data. Let's look at those two uh, functions again and with another example. I'm going to open up the post template and the post template is what renders every post. So if we go here, let's find one of these posts, I like this lovesick uh, cat print. And what we can do here is log just like we did on the author page. So we could log all post data. So I annotate this, put this there as well as logging specific data like that. So we save again, we refresh, and let's open up our terminal, scroll down. All right, so first remember we wanted to get all of our post data. Scrolling up. All right, so we have it here, all post data. And so you can see the slug, the ID, the title, the feature image, our authors, our tags. So everything that's available to log to the, um, in the template is available here that you can see. We also then after that, just did our tags 
And so we can see that for this post, there is a single tag called print, which has all of the properties that are available to, that are associated with a tag. So this is an interesting way that you can kind of see which data is available that you might not know. Uh, for instance, with tags, an interesting one is that every tag can have an accent color associated with it that you can set in Ghost Admin. And so this opens up some design possibilities for, you know, color coding tags or doing some fun thing with color and specific tags in the future that you might not know, but that you can kind of uncover some of these things by logging to the console. So those are, again, coming back to our template, ways that you can use the log helper to show you which data is available and maybe even find data that you didn't know about. In this last section, we're going to take what we've learned already about logging data and use it to tackle a bit more advanced problem. So Jamie is on their profile page and they want to be able to display the number of posts they've written. They want to show how many posts they've published on Cats and Art. The first step then, taking what we've learned, is to see if this data, so um, the publication count, is included with the other author data. So what we can do is use our log helper, put log, annotate it with all author data, and put this, so to show all the available data in this context, save it, go to our terminal, and refresh the page. We can see the object here, all author data, but within these properties, there is no post count included. So we can't put that information from here, from this context. So when that happens, and we're not finding the data that we need, we want, what we can try to do is go up a context. So we come back here and let's try doing that. So let's go up a context. This is an annotation. We're just putting that in so we can kind of have a better sense of the data we're looking at. And to go up a context, it's similar if you're familiar with navigating directories in the terminal, but you do dot dot slash. And so that will go up a context and then it will log this. It will log all the data available in that context. So I'm going to save this, come back to our terminal, refresh, and now scroll down. So we see here our note going up a context, and then we see definitely different data than what um, we had seen before. And so there's going to be a lot here. This is the root context, and there is a lot of information. So we see that. The author context is on this page. There's posts, but what we need to do is keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, and we're getting close. They overshot it a bit. All right, pagination. So in the pagination, this is um, what helps Ghost navigate different pages of a collection. So Jamie has, so we can see here, 100 posts on cats and art. Ghost is going to show 25 per page, which means there's four pages. And so this breaks those posts up into those four pages. But what we want here and what Jamie wants is that total number. So what we could do is get this total number, 100 posts, and use that to show it in their author profile. So I can go back here and to kind of show a little bit more how this is working, do pagination.total. And we can put here total posts published. Save that, come back to the terminal, refresh, scroll down, look for it here. And here we go. So total posts published. 100. So now let's bring that into the template. And I have a um, span tag that I used to, to do this. Come down to the name. I'm going to paste this in. So I have a span tag here with a class of author post count that I'm using to just put a bit of a CSS in to help style it. And then 
we see what we found out with the log helper. So rather than logging it, I'm putting this data in directly. So this pagination dot total, then putting a space and posts. So if I save this and then refresh, we can see that now this 100 posts is included um, on Jamie's author page. And so that's a way that you can navigate context and change the data context to pull in data that is not in the current context. So it's a little more complicated, but it's a very powerful tool. And it's especially good when you're trying to troubleshoot when something isn't working. That's it. You now know how to use the log helper to help put specific data, all available data, and even switch context. Knowing how to use the log helper is an incredible tool for upping your ghost development game. Not only can you debug your themes faster, but new creative possibilities open up. It's a game changer. If you're looking to learn more about developing ghost themes, head on over to our tutorials page where we have lots of resources for helping you level up your skills and learn more about Ghost. Also be sure to sign up for our Build with Ghost newsletter where we share tips and tricks, new developments in the Ghost world, and exciting sites made with Ghost. See you in the next one.